Stage seven, our sixth stage of day one of Superstition Mountain Mystery Tiga. Yak 24. Standing in area A or area B with one hand touching each X mark. Shotgun loaded, safe, staged in a shotgun barrel. Rifle loaded, safe, staged in a rifle bin. On signal, engage shotgun targets 1 through 12 with shotgun birdshot from area A and engage rifle targets 1 through 3, long range rifle steel, from area B through port 1 and engage rifle targets 1 through 3, long range steel, with rifle from area B from port 2. Also engage all paper rifle targets from area B. Must safely abandon rifle and shotgun in respective receptacles before using the other firearm. While shooting the stage, participants must enter and exit the helicopter only through the rear door. The front access way is for walkthrough use only. Event officials will call hits to targets T1 through T3.
leaving it. It's always weird that they gave you the option to start with rifle, but why would you do that? That seemed like sabotage. You would want to go with the shotgun first outside and then go into the rifle. I don't think we saw anyone do Definitely that longer first. to leave the helicopter than get in the helicopter. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I think all of us started with the shotgun outside and then went to the rifle. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, shotgun was a non event, right? A couple of play rounds. Yeah, um, there were a few people who had problems with that. Uh, once you get over enthusiastic on the first array mm -hmm. and you, oh, 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 you miss a round, okay, make up that one. You miss that one, you make it up. By that point, you don't have enough rounds in the gun, even if you do a quad, a quad load to finish the whole stage. Mm -hmm. And there's people going to war on the second plate rack and then going, uh oh, my bolt's just locked to the rear. And once that happens, then that's another three, four seconds to remedy that. So I saw a lot of partial pattern hits from yeah. other people shooting that. Getting the, too fast? Mm -hmm. the, the plate rack on the right hand side was a bit further out, so probably past you know where they're going to get a neutralization regardless of how they hit it, because they're only getting you know maybe thirty percent of their shot on it or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I choked up for this one. No, as in, you know, crying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did, I don't know. So then we get in, so then you get into the helicopter and the rifle, you, you just demolish the rifle. Uh, yeah, I, I knew I was going to have to get uncomfortable for this, but once you get uncomfortable and you get locked in, uh, you can sort of find little nooks and crannies all over the inside of that airframe where you can you know, put parts of your body in and you just, it's, it's just one for one after that stage. Um, okay, uh, that would shoot really well if you were Yeah, yeah, it's hammering them. Uh, no question about it. And then uh, you to shoot them all. And I knew that I was going to shoot the long range steel from both positions. And the reason for that is that I knew that I had eight rounds. I had eight rounds to make three hits. Because that's how I have a 20 round magazine. Yes. Uh, so eight rounds to make th uh, three hits. And then if I was counting and I, I shot more than eight rounds, then I'm going to have to single shot the target array. And so that's why I did that. Okay. For me on the rifle from the first position, I went one for one on it, like just five, five, six. Yeah, just just nailed them. Yeah. And then the second position, uh, when I got there, the chopper's moving more from me moving around inside of it. And every round I'm firing, the chopper's moving more. Dude, I think you win more than the chopper. I'm, I may exceed it first, <laughs> that one, right? Do you exceed the weight of the air right. Right. <laughs> So uh, I get in position there, and I get the first two, even though I have to shoot some extra rounds at them. And that last one, I think the wind kicked up, and I was hitting all around it. It was squirrely. And then. The, when you're seeing like dust signature going different directions, um, at least that's what I was seeing through the scope at the time. I just finished out the mag and took a plus ten on the last target. So this is what, like I said in the last stage, sometimes it's worth giving up a target if you go to war on it. Yep. So you're just shooting fifty-five gray bullets. Correct. Those are pretty susceptible to wind. 
So that's probably what you're dealing with there. Um, again, I struggled with my zero on this. My zero changed. I was originally using Hurtenberg Mill Serp, and I went to the Oki commercial. Lands up to shooting high. It took me a while to get kind of doped in on that, but then eventually I did get all three long range from both windows. Um, I decided to go one for one on each of the A zones on the paper so I would have more ammunition on hand. I had a bunch of malfunctions um, in this one. I think I had three or four. And when you're on the clock, it's what you don't do. I couldn't really discern or determine what the malfunction was beyond pull the magazine, run the action. And this is where I'm going to say bullpups are challenging, at least in many regards, because there's no way to look in there and see what's going on. I just know something's wrong. The trigger was dead, or there was one in one instance, the, uh, one of the spent cases wasn't fully ejected out of their little whiz-bang ejector. Mm -hmm. And so I ran the action, then it did jump out. So I'm like, okay, clear that, put the mag in, run it again. Kind of what the AK method of just run the, take the mag out, run the action twice, put the mag in, run it again. And it happened three or four times, and the MDR before this, in the other stage, had no issues. Now, to the audience, I am running um, Brownells Aluminum SR25 steel straight wall mags and some of their brand new waffle mags which I've had no issues with in the, or their BRN10, their AR10 reproduction. I don't think the mags have any issues, but I don't want to give the MDR the best chance, and, and certainly I don't want to blame it because maybe it's a mag issue, I don't know. So tomorrow I'm going to run strictly P mags, which should eliminate that. And if we have issues tomorrow, well, then we got something going on. Just hold it for an L85. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let me go with an L85. L85, that's the right answer for sure. Maybe the most, like, maybe when they get to A7 of the L85, right? <laughs> But I mean, this was, but when, in this particular, in the MDR, when you open that action up, you cannot see into the chamber. You cannot see what's going in. You can in the L85. Yeah, well, that's a benefit in that regard. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things we've talked about in range a lot, is that the ability, all mechanical things fail, and being able to discern what has gone wrong is a valuable, a valuable asset to any system, yep. whether it's a computer or a car or a gun. And in this gun, it's a closed system. You open the action, you're like, I don't know what happened run the action, hopefully it will clear. It did clear every time and I was able to finish the stage, but I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. We don't know if that was magazine or what, because the gun ran fine up until this and ran fine on the stage before this. Tomorrow's going to be PMAG day and we'll find out more. Bring it. Yeah, we'll bring it tomorrow. So hopefully you enjoyed day one of Mountain Mystery 3-Gun here at Rio Salado, and we've got, I think, five more stages tomorrow that we're going to bring to the channel as well. And I'd like to thank both of you for being part of this today, part of the channel. It's been really great having you. Thanks for watching so far.